Hi friends, in this session we will discuss capacity of a roundabout as given in IRC 65 2017. This code was revised about five years back and it has some departure from earlier code. So roundabouts are considered to be the safest type of intersection as there are very few conflict points and they are very efficient in handling the right turning traffic. It is a specialized form of at grade intersection where vehicles from different arms travel around a central island in one direction in orderly and regimented manner and then exit from the roundabout to their desired direction. The central island may be circular, it may be elliptical, any other shape depending upon the layout of the intersection. All vehicles move around the central island in a clockwise direction in left hand drive conditions and in anti clockwise direction in right hand drive conditions. This roundabout can be a single lane roundabout or can be a multiple lane roundabout. In case of single lane roundabout, approach to the intersection is a single lane approach, whereas in case of multi lane, it is two or more than two lanes here. So this will require a larger size of intersection, more space, but they can handle heavy traffic also. This will require a smaller size, but their traffic handling capacity is limited. The capacity of roundabout is based on the concept of entry capacity. And entry capacity is the maximum flow rate that can be accommodated at a roundabout entry. Movement to roundabout is based on gap acceptance. And this is the departure from earlier code IRC 65 of 1976, where the capacity was estimated based on weaving theory. Now here, this vehicle while entering into the roundabout area, it will find a gap in the circulating flow to merge with it and then it will exit in the desired direction, maybe through or maybe a right turn. So every vehicle entering the roundabout will require some gap in the circulating flow. So that is the gap acceptance process. And for this gap acceptance process or to determine the capacity, we require these three parameters, the circulating flow, the critical gap and follow up time. I explained this concept of critical gap and follow up time in another video. And if you have not watched that video, if you have not watched that video, you can see the link given in the description box here. The circulating flow is the traffic volume which is faced by the driver while entering the roundabout. So if you consider this intersection, a vehicle approaching from this eastbound approach, it will face the vehicles which are coming from northbound and going to either straight or to right side. So all these vehicles which are coming from northbound approach, moving right or straight they will be using the circulating area. Vehicles which are going left, they will not use it. And similarly, all vehicles which are coming from the opposite direction and making a right turn here, they will also use the circulating area and then make a right turn. So these are the vehicles which basically will be using the circulating area. And if U-turns are also permitted, on all approaches, then U-turn from all remaining three approaches will also be using this area. So when a vehicle enters from this eastbound approach, it will face the traffic from northbound, which are going right and through, and also right turning vehicles from westbound approach and U-turn from all three approaches. That becomes circulating flow for this approach. Similarly, you can find out for remaining approaches. The thumb rule is that 
the right and through traffic from the approach which is on the right side of the subject approach and right turning traffic from the opposite direction that becomes the circuiting flow so based on this circulating flow the entry capacity is estimated and entry capacity is given by this equation this equation has been taken from in the us highway capacity manual with calibration of these parameters a and b to suit the indian conditions here tc is the critical gap and tf is the follow up time and they depend upon the geometry of the intersection based on the diameter you can choose the value of critical gap and follow up time follow up time is assumed to be 75% of critical gap once you know these you can calculate the capacity using this equation right now this figure shows how the entry capacity changes with circulating flow and the diameter of center island you can see it reduces with circulating flow because the vehicles do not find suitable gaps when traffic volume is high and it increases with diameter of center island because the size of intersection becomes larger and the freedom to enter intersection is more so procedure is like this the first you get the classified traffic movement data for each approach it should be classified as well as movement wise data then geometry of the roundabout number of lanes and diameter of central island are important but analysis is based on only the central island diameter then convert this flow into pcu so traffic movement data from each approach is converted into pcu and you can choose the pcu factors from this table depending upon the diameter of the central island then calculate circulating flow for each arm as i explained earlier select the value of tc and tf from the table and then calculate the entry capacity for each approach once you know the capacity of individual approach you can find out the capacity of the round i can better explain this procedure with the help of one example and the example is like this there is a four arm roundabout having entry in each approach two lane wide and diameter of central island 44 meter the traffic flow at the roundabout is given here from each direction there are all three movements present left through right and there is no u turn so this is an indication of u turn movement there is no u turn on any of the approaches the overall traffic composition given at the intersection is given here car is 32% big car 20% lcv 8% and two wheeler 40% so we assume there are only four categories of vehicles and this intersection is located in urban area the solution of this the first step is to collect the traffic volume data for each approach and it is already given in the question the second step is to get information on geometry of the roundabout and diameter of central island this is also given here that it is two lane approach means it is a multi lane roundabout and central diameter is central island diameter is 44 meter third step is to convert the flow into pcu per hour for a diameter of 44 meter pcu values can be taken from this table this is the row which is applicable here and for two wheeler it is 0.32 and for small car naturally it is 1 for big car 1.4 and for lcv pcu factor is 1.53 so now there can be two methods of converting flow into pcu per hour one method is that indivisible movement from each approach because the traffic composition is same for all directions so you can convert indivisible movement into pcu a general approach would be that if you assume that there are 100 vehicles in the traffic stream then out of these 100 there will be 32 cars and these 32 cars will be equivalent to 32 pcu 
there are 20 big cards because the big card are 20%. So 20 into 1.4 will be 28 PCU. 8% LCV means 8 LCV and therefore 8 into 1.5 is 12 PCU and 40% tubular will be equivalent to 12.8 PCU. Some of these will be 84.8 PCU. So 100 vehicles in the traffic stream are equivalent to 84.8 passenger car unit and therefore multiplying factor for the mixed traffic is 0.848 to get the number from vehicle per hour to PCU per hour. It's a simple approach. You can multiply each of these traffic volume data by this 0.848 to get the flow in PCU. This is the flow diagram when all values are in PCU per hour. And we assume that this is the north direction and therefore the, the this will be called as the northbound approach and this will be eastbound approach, this will be westbound approach and this will be southbound approach. This is general notification generally we assume. Step 4 is calculate circulating flow for each approach. Now circulating flow is basically that when a vehicle approaches the roundabout, how much traffic it will face in the circulating area here and this is the traffic through which this vehicle will find a gap to merge with the circulating flow. Now if you see this roundabout, the circulating flow for this vehicle which is coming from northbound approach will be through traffic from this approach, right turning from westbound approach and also right turning from the opposing approach. Now there is no other vehicle which will be conflicting, which will be circulating in this area. Now if U-turns are also permissible, then U-turns from all the three approaches, from southbound, from westbound, from eastbound, U-turn from all these three directions will also be circulating flow for this movement. So general equation is that the circulating flow for let us say eastbound approach for this approach, it will be through plus right turn from northbound approach which is on the right side of the driver. Approach which is on the right side of the driver northbound approach and right turn from the opposite direction that is westbound approach and you turn from all remaining three approaches westbound northbound and southbound approaches so if you apply this equation to all three approaches you can get that circulating flow for eastbound approach will be through plus right from northbound and right turn from westbound so 254 plus 153 right turn plus 153 right turn from opposite side that is 560 pcu per hour Similarly, for westbound approach, it will be through plus right turn from southbound. When you say westbound, its right side stream is eastbound. So you should take 220 plus 85 plus right turn from opposite direction 271. That comes 576. Similarly, you can calculate for other approaches also and for northbound, it will be 747 PCU per hour and for southbound, it will be 914 PCU per hour. The fifth step is to calculate value of critical gap and follow up time. And for a diameter of 40 to 50 meter, these values are 1.65 and 1.24. So we take critical gap as 1.65 second and follow up time 1.24 second. Now with these values of TC, TF and QC, you can calculate the capacity for each entry by using this equation. That entry capacity is A into e to the power minus BQ. A you can calculate if you know the value of TF that is 2903.2 and B depends upon TC and TF and that is 
equal to 0 0.00026.1. So, putting the value of A and B and QC, you can calculate the capacity of each approach. That is the entry capacity of each approach. Circulating flow, we calculated in the earlier step, step 4. ATC and TF are here, so you can find out the entry capacity. The next step is to find out the capacity of the roundabout. Now, capacity of roundabout is given by this equation. It is the maximum of entry capacity of one arm plus flow at remaining three arms. We should understand this that the entry capacity of any arm, any approach is determined for the given condition of traffic flow at remaining three approaches. And therefore, the entry capacity of eastbound is 2473, that is the maximum flow this approach can take. But this maximum flow is when the flow in remaining three directions is 806 plus 475 plus 407. So the total capacity will be 4161. It is similar to a situation that holding the traffic flow at three approaches as they are today, you keep on increasing traffic flow on one approach. And what is that maximum limit that this approach can accommodate vehicles when the flow at three approaches is constant? So this is the eastbound approach can accommodate 2473 PCU per hour when the flow in remaining three approaches is like this. So that is the capacity of intersection. Similarly, for westbound, the, the entry capacity is 2,463 and add the flow at remaining three approaches, you get the total capacity. So you get the four values here. And the maximum of these four values is taken as the capacity of the intersection. That is the equation. Entry capacity, of one arm plus flow at remaining three arms. So you get the four values and take the maximum of these four values. So the, the capacity of the intersection is 4,614 PCU per hour. And if you just want to check the V by C ratio, the total flow at roundabout coming from all the four approaches is 2,004, is 2,745 PCU per hour. And therefore, BYC ratio is 0.6. Now, this is approximately, you can say it will be level of service C, but actual level of service will be determined based on delay. So, friends, in this session, we have discussed the capacity analysis of a roundabout as given in IRC 65 2017 or in Indo SCM 2017. Two methods are same. If you have any question, please do write in the comment box, share the video and subscribe my channel.